Thank you. Um, my talk's on hackathons and their place in open source. I'm well aware that there are plenty of people more qualified than I to talk about the technical side of open source and the projects they've been working on. So to give you all a quick break from the masses of complex information that you've been bombarded with throughout the evening, I'm going to go down a slightly different route. Some of you may recognize me from my presentation last year where I offered an insight into open source from a student's perspective. This can be found on the OSSG YouTube channel, but today I'm going to delve into the world of hackathons, briefly discussing what they are, and most importantly, why I think they could be the key to driving the open source industry. For those of you who don't recognize me, I'm Daniel. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Reading, achieving a first class honors degree in computer science. I'm an active member for the BCS, maintaining the young professional role on the committee for the OSSG, and both the Early Careers Advocate and Student Chapter President for the BCS Berkshire Branch. In my time at university, I achieved the Eden Ravenscroft Award for Academic Excellency, and I competed alongside two colleagues in the Huawei ICT Global Competition 2019-2020 for innovation, where we won first place from over 150,000 applicants across 80 countries. Uh, until this October, I was the president for RU Hack Society, which is the tech society at the University of Reading. As the president of the RU Hacking Society, me and my team ran a 24-hour hackathon, which links back to what I want to discuss today. For many of you, a hackathon might be a new term, but I'm sure you will all be familiar with the concept. As you may have guessed, hackathon is a portmanteau of the words hacking and marathon. This is not hacking in the common computer security usage, but more in the sense of exploratory programming that hack something together, usually resulting in a slightly less than elegant, possibly not optimally efficient solution, but a working product nonetheless, or at least a presentable concept. Hackathons themselves are limited time period events. Some can be week long, some 48 hours, some six hours, and ours was 24 hours. In these time periods, you will have to collaborate and cooperate with the team in a design-like sprint event. Think of it like an invention marathon or a creative problem solving sprint where you tackle the problems and challenges that are set out before you. Hackathons are amazing events. They look brilliant on CVs, even outside of the computer science field, and they are one of the best networking opportunities you'll ever get. They give you a chance to experiment with new ideas, technologies and topics. Most hackathons function as a competitive event in which teams will work together to collaborate and solve problems from multiple angles. In an academic or recreational setting, hackathons are usually sponsored events where companies will set challenges for the students or participants, and the idea is to hack together a solution which can be presented in an almost science fair style manner. And while a lot of the ideas resolve, revolve around a computer science core, the business, marketing, design, and expertise aspects ensure that everyone has a way to contribute. Traditionally, there would be prizes and swag or merchandise on offer for participants to obtain, as well as workshops, talks, Q&A sessions, and meet and greets, plus more going on throughout the time period too. The hacking community itself is one of many wonders, with a lot of participants turning up without a team to make a team on the day, collaborate and create with a group of strangers they've never met, and produce an astonishingly amazing product at the end. They're always willing to help out one another, including their competitors, and they really thrive off the time pressures. The collaborative community feel is one thing that has always driven open source, and it is why I believe hackathons are quintessential to driving open source further. Aside from the obvious parallels between the two communities, most events would require a GitHub or GitLab submission. And as I mentioned before, the use of code sharing, version control, and collaboration software is possibly the most crucial influence in turning the world towards open source. Due to the limited time constraints and the idea of creating a hack together proof of concept, rather than a fully fledged solution with no kinks or bugs, it's more than common to find that a team would use an open source library or module, which would assist them in their task. This could be anything from a simple library full of useful functions, which would save them time having to code it themselves, or a full-blown machine learning algorithm which is available open source. Obviously, simply 
access to this and using this, having the availability and knowledge that this is there free to access and use will drive the open source community more than ever. It will motivate more people to make their code open source, which will in turn drive the open source industry even further. As I mentioned before, I'm a huge advocate of both open source and hackathons as a vehicle for open source. So as president of Are You Hacking, we ran a 24 hour hackathon. Are You Hacking is the student led society that is a part of the University of Reading. Our focus as a society is about getting people involved with the tech world, connecting those with a passion for anything tech related with the industry and the companies they want to be connected with and equally vice versa. There is just a stronger of a requirement to have the industry and tech companies integrated with the student community as there is for the students to get involved with the industry. They host casual socials and other events and provide the perfect opportunity for people from different backgrounds to connect, collaborate and learn together, with the biggest event each year being the hackathon. This event originally started as a small idea to host maybe 100 participants set out to be organized between a few friends who shared a passion for tech and wanted to give the same opportunities to those around us. Most hackathons have a significantly larger team than we had, with some having over 30 members on the organizational team. For us, we had six members on our committee. Last year, our hackathon got canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but this year we ensured that didn't happen. So as with many events this year, it took place in the virtual world. Not only did it allow us to open up to so many more participants, but it also created an amazing dynamic due to the pandemic inspiring a lot of the challenge set out to the participants. So this originally small scale event eventually turned into a global event with over a thousand signups and participants attending from all inhabited continents. We secured over 10,000 pounds of self-made funding alongside the help of our amazing sponsors that we worked with, who also provided the brilliant challenges, which saw some absolutely genius solutions and approaches. Here are some of the gold sponsors that we had, and they all had the opportunity to connect and communicate with the participants, as well as setting cha challenges, hosting workshops and giving talks. It's more than likely you'll recognize some, if not all of them. We had Zebra and Iota, who brought an expertise in blockchain and hardware, giving a challenge around using blockchain for COVID vaccine passports. We had Bayer Life Hub UK, an artificial intelligence motivated research think tank based out of Thames Valley. We had Citrix, obviously the cloud computing giant. BCS Berkshire also sponsored our event, as well as the South Central Institute for Technology a Reading-based institute with a specialty around technology. We also had uh, three more bronze sponsors. You will most likely recognize Postman, the API platform behind Twitter and so many other services. We also had Cirrus Response, which is a contact center as a service, and 20i, which is a web reseller hosting service. We worked with a load of other partners as well, including the Thames Valley Artificial Intelligence Hub, the Southeast Regional Organized Crime Units, and two of the largest hackathon running organizations in the UK, being Major League Hacking and Hackathon UK, as well as a few partners to help facilitate the logistics. And obviously, we worked with the Computer Science Department at the University of Reading. As you can see, we had many challenges ranging in difficulty and complexity, making, from making something boring fun which the solution implemented a web-based game with the intention of persuading children to accomplish their core chores, all the way to implementing an alternative system to the current university clearing process, tackling a variety of issues and coming up with some more amazing solutions, which these companies then took and used and implemented, inspired by the hackathon produce solutions. Here are some more, including best machine learning using JIRA, best use of Google Cloud, best hardware hack. And you, you might be thinking, how will this help to drive open source? As I've mentioned previously, it seems critically clear to me that the best way to get more people involved in open source is to attack the problem at its root. Remove the stigma and remove the fear of using open source and introduce people to it much earlier than they currently are. And Recreational and competitive hackathons are an insanely effective way to do this. From simply encouraging collaboration and the use of available open source resources, you're defeating a huge part of the problem. The younger generations also love the competitive aspect and it drives them further into getting involved. 
However, industry has its own place for hackathons, and recently more and more companies are conducting them. With it being a new buzzword, especially amongst the engineering and computer science field, with slight adjustments to how they are run by creating a short time limited event in which teams have to come up with a solution, companies have been able to implement hackathon style practices in a form ex of extremely accelerated agile development. Using a short hackathon to target to using a short hackathon as a target to implement a new feature, solve a bug, a problem, and so much more. So the intrinsic principles of open source and hackathons are so closely related and shared, such that any positive move throughout one community will almost certainly create a ripple through the other. Thank you all for listening. Any questions? Any questions, Danny? Thank you very much, Daniel. Um...